So back to school season has always had like holiday vibes, you know? Like it was a time of year. I don't know, but this year feels a little different because back to school is more like back to home for a lot of us. <laughs> so this video is about tips for online and hybrid learning because back to school tips for a computer screen <laughs> are gonna look a lot different than some of the back to school tips I've put out in some of my other videos. Now before we begin, if you're feeling it, please like this video and subscribe and then follow me over on Instagram for daily inspiration and behind the scenes fun over there as well. Hi, I'm Katie Azevedo. I'm a private executive function coach and I have tutored thousands of students privately one-on-one -on -one, over 14 years in SAT, ACT, GRE, college application essays, writing, study skills and executive functions and everything related to school but you are here for the tips. So here we go, number one, I say this all the time in like all of my back to school videos, you gotta create a study space. I've created study space videos based on your learning style and I will link all of those in the description box below. If you know if you're kinesthetic, auditory or visual, you should set up your workspace according to your learning style. Also, if you're hybrid or online learning, you're gonna need to set up your camera in a way where it makes sense with the light. A hint, you never want to have the light behind you, you always want to have the light in front of you. If it's behind you, the person seeing you on the screen is just going to see a black silhouette. Set your camera up or your laptop with a light coming at you. Also be aware of what is in your background. If you are going to be on camera and you're in your bedroom, you want to make sure you don't have your dirty clothes on the floor. You want to make sure you have appropriate things behind you so, you know, so that you don't look like a schmuck, <laughs> so that you don't get in trouble. You're gonna need a good chair, you're gonna need your supplies, and you're going to need storage. Speaking of supplies, that takes me to tip number two, which is have the right supplies. So even if you're online or hybrid learning or completely online learning, you're gonna need some traditional school supplies. So pens, highlighters, papers. You're also gonna need a camera, charger, mouse, mouse pad, ethernet cables. Um, perhaps if you're using like a tablet, you might need an external um, keyboard, a stylus, right? Back to school for hybrid or online learning has kind of more supplies to it if you think about it. And back to school supplies for online and hybrid learning now includes apps. So you might want to start exploring note-taking apps like Notability and Notion or even Adobe. You might need a scanner app to scan things and submit them to your teacher. I use DocScan on my phone. It's free, it totally works. Maybe Google Drive, Evernote, something to store your files in. Now, if you're gonna commit to using an app, make sure you have it on all your devices. So if you're gonna be using Google Docs, get Google Docs on your phone, on your iPad, on your desktop. Maybe there's a Chrome extension. If you're gonna be using Canvas for your online platform, yeah, that's online, but there's also an app for Canvas. So make sure that's downloaded on all your devices. Number three, figure out and use a consistent document naming convention. And I've talked about this in one of my other videos, but every time you open or create a file, um, a Google Slides, a PDF, anything where you're creating a name or a document like from scratch, you wanna name it a certain way. So I always suggest keep it simple. The name of the class and a description of the document. So not English essay, cause like you're gonna have a million English essays by the time we're all said and done. but English catcher in the rye essay, that'll do. If you're using Google Docs and you forget to name your document, often it'll name itself as untitled. By the end of the week, you might have like five Google Docs called untitled. Go in once a week, clean them up, and give them titles according to your naming convention. Now always have a visual daily and weekly schedule in front of you. If you are watching this video in September, 2020 or after, then check out the link in the description box below. I will have a link to one page, very simple, but they are really good. I've put a lot of work into them. Um, printables for daily and weekly agenda and calendar planning. If you are doing online learning or hybrid learning, you're gonna have to log into classes at a certain time because they're gonna be live. You're gonna need to know when to show up in school versus if you're doing hybrid learning versus when you're just gonna have to log into a camera that stuff you can't just fly by the seat of your, fly by the seat of your pants and wing it you have to know in advance when you need to get up and go when you need to log into your computer 
every Monday or maybe a Sunday night for Sunday night planning. It's just map out the week of what times and when you need to go where. The principles that I have in the description box below, <laughs> such a mouthful, oh my God, down below. Um, I have a ton of different ones for different setups. So if you need an agenda for different times of the day or just to-do lists or just homework trackers, so many different types, check them out. Number five, keep an assignment notebook. Do not use the online learning platform that, platform that your school is using. Do not use Google Classroom or uh, Blackboard or Canvas. Don't use those to track your homework. Those systems are only as good as the information that the teachers put into them and not all teachers upload assignments when they should, how you like it according to what your preferences are. Plus those systems are chronological. I've explained this before in other videos where every time a teacher puts in a new announcement or a new assignment, it keeps pushing things down, down, down till it's out of, out of sight, out of mind. You need an assignment notebook or downloadable printables in the description box below where you can see that stuff front and center so you can just glance at it and say, what do I need to do and when is it due? Number six, keep a simple list of all user login names and passwords. I suggest you keep this in two different places. One, and it's a, um, like a digital document, like a Google Doc, in case you have passwords that are really complicated and lots of different characters, so you can copy and paste from the computer. You're also gonna wanna print out that list and slap it on the wall next to the computer or put it on a sticky note, because sometimes your passwords are gonna be so simple that you don't need to open the document, copy and paste the password. It's easier sometimes to just glance at the sheet of paper as a reference and go, oh yeah, that's my password. Two places you wanna keep this list. Number seven, get the name and contact information for at least one person in every one of your classes and exchange your information in return. Email's fine, that's great, but I would suggest you get their phone number too because there will absolutely be times when you need to reach out to somebody with a question or something or you missed something or you wanna ask like, are we logging in now or my camera's broken or whatever. And it's like the teacher's not the right person for that. So you wanna have someone from the back end that you can reach out to whenever you need. Number eight, use scholar.google instead of regular Google when you're looking for resources for your schoolwork. When you do a regular Google search, you get everything from like academic journals to like creepy Billy Bob in his basement. Like you get, you get everything. But if you use scholar.google and then search through there, it's still a Google product and it's free obviously, then the results that you get are academic. And those are the results that your teacher's gonna be looking for versus the blog written by creepy Billy Bob in his basement. Number nine, create a Sunday routine. Now online and hybrid learning can have its challenges, particularly when it comes to balancing and managing and organizing um, actual papers and online papers, real materials and digital materials. There's a lot of moving parts and each day and each week schedule might actually look different from the next, that's complicated. So every Sunday I would block out 45 minutes to do the following. Number one, plan out your week. Number two, fill out your calendar with days and specific times that you need to be somewhere or log in somewhere. Number three, go through all your digital files and make sure that they do have names according to your naming convention. Number four, clean out your downloads folder and your desktop, your actual digital desktop. desktop. Number five, print documents that you're gonna need for upcoming classes for the week. You always wanna print out whatever you can so you have a paper copy of it. Much easier for learning. Number six, go through your folders, your actual folders and your digital folders and get rid of junk and get rid of duplicates. Number seven, clear off your workspace, your actual desk, your workspace. Number eight, go through your assignment notebook. Make sure everything that you had written in there from the previous week has been completed and submitted. Number nine, make sure you actually hit submit on any online documents that you needed to have submitted digitally. Sometimes we do them and we think that like, we're just doing them is all of it, but you gotta hit the submit button at the top, right? And then number 10, check your email for any notifications or changes to the schedules or updates that teachers may have sent you. Also, delete junk emails while you're in there. So this whole 10 step, I think that was 10, <laughs> I don't know, I don't count. Um, that whole 10 step process should take about 45 minutes and you should do it every single Sunday. It is worth it, I promise. And number 10, ask for help 
early. Online learning poses so many challenges for kids who really need more help in class. It completely erases those opportunities when you might be working at your desk and the teacher walks by. Like, trust me, as teachers, we can like read your face. We know you, we know you're struggling, even if you're like, nah, I got it. Like, no, you're not, and we can tell, right? But when you're online learning, we're not walking by your desk, like reading your body language and seeing that your worksheet is empty. So a lot of that asking help for peace has to come from you. That's as we call self-advocacy and it's hard for some people. Now is your chance though. You have to ask for help. You have to be vocal. The best advice I have is to not wait. If you are confused about something, try really hard to know that you're confused. That's actually something called metacognition, which is thinking about thinking. It's that moment when you're like, I don't get it. That's good. You recognize you don't get it. Now what are you gonna do? Can you show up to your teacher's office hours? Can you write her an email? If you are like in an online class, is there a, um, like a chat feature where you can write your question there? If you're doing a hybrid model and you'd rather ask your teacher in person, then write that question down and bring it into the classroom the next time you're in there. Ask for the help because learning's cumulative. If you don't get something over here and your whole class moves on, your teacher moves on, then you're not gonna be able to build on the stuff that you should have learned earlier because you didn't learn it earlier. Listen, online and hybrid learning is new for a lot of people. And when anything's new, it comes with a learning curve, which means it's gonna be messy and that's okay. <laughs> The key though is to be honest when things get messy, to recognize when they get messy and then do something about it. If something isn't working, you have to change it. I can't say that enough. Honestly, online learning isn't going anywhere and when we can eventually all get safely back into the classroom, I really think that this model or pieces of this model is gonna stick around for a while. So I'm sharing these back to school strategies even though they're geared toward online and hybrid learning because that's like where the nation is right now. The idea is like next year when things get back to normal, these tips will still be relevant. Also, let me know in the comments what your school is doing. Are you doing hybrid? Are you doing full in person? Are you doing um, full online? And then like what strategies are working for you if you have any, or what's your struggle? Because I read that stuff and that helps me develop future resources, which in turn helps you. So leave all that stuff in the comments. Listen. You've got this. We've got this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video.